Claire B, go ahead. Which page? Um, August um, 15, page 11. Um, about seven or eight from the bottom. Um, to keep the town world to use quiet colors, staying away from harsh amber light. I think I just said harsh light because it's amber, red, and white and not have them on at 2 a.m. I don't know if I said that, but I know we are having some on at 2 a.m. So strike that whole. Yeah, and not the rest of that. Yeah, just strike that. So after light, we'll strike that. And just, um, and then um, strike the paper. Yeah, your um, gas stations. And then also August 1st. Do you need to make a motion to approve the August 15th no, amendment? No, I think you pulled that as well. No, no, not the 15th. Oh, okay. Motion to approve town council meeting minutes of August 15th as amended. Second. Okay, motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 On August 1st, page 4. Okay. Um, four lines from the bottom. Um, Councilor Buck stated it could not just be eliminated. Attorney McAllister suggested striking it, which would be acceptable. I thought you said it could be eliminated, Tom. Which one was this? Um, page? Four, four from the page bottom, four. page four, page four August four. 1st. Councilor Buck stated it could not just be eliminated. I think you stated that it could just be eliminated. And Attorney McAllister agreed that that yes. would be acceptable. Yes. It just could be eliminated. Yes. Should strike now. That was the total you take. Okay. Uh huh, that's it for me. Yeah, just for me on August 1 minutes, uh, page 5, the very end, the motion. I guess I made the motion. I guess. Did I make the motion? I guess I did. I was not here, but I didn't. Oh. Um, so we could check that. And, um, well, I remember you making the motion, and I said something about like you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're. Yes, we're right. That was on page five. Oh, I don't remember. Maybe. Yeah, well, you, you didn't. No. Yeah, you <laughs> so we'll check okay. that. Yeah. Right. And I didn't think I did. No, we didn't let it go. We okay, all right. Go. That's right. Motion to approve 10 council meeting minutes of August 1st is amended. Second. Okay, motion to approve all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the line report, expression of appreciation to public works for their assistance in helping the resident with the tree situation. I got a call uh, a couple months ago. Uh, folks up Old Depot Road had one tree that was near the driveway. It was really rotted. And DPW was excellent about getting right out there the next day. And not only was that tree rotted, but three more. Mm -hmm. So they were really happy. And I just want to thank Tim and his crew for uh, getting out there so quick. Um, that's all for me. Uh, public forum. Scott Builder is 20 years before Ashley. I rise to address the town council uh, with some criticism. Uh, the town council popkin consists of five people. And it's not limited strictly to the town council president. And uh, in, in light of the fact of the transit hub, uh, I'd like to uh, note that the council did go on record recently against it, but I don't believe any letters were formally sent by the council to uh, to the governor's office or not. I'll stand corrected, but I don't believe they, they should be. I think, uh, excuse me, I think that any letters opposing should be sent to the, the governor or any appropriate person. The, uh, the situation is this. Who speaks for the town Hopkin? Town Council Hopkin consists of five members. And while the council president uh, generally has a right in times of emergency to speak, the whole philosophy of where the town is going on development and other issues should be shared by five, by five people. And this didn't happen on the transit hub issue. And the, the bad thing for the town of Hopkins on this episode, and I do call it an episode, is the fact that uh, when the letter was sent by the town manager with approval of the council president uh, last year, June 2nd, uh, 2015, I believe was the correct day. Uh, the, uh, the state went with that and uh, they went and applied for the Tiger Grant saying they had the support of the Tom Hopkins. And the question is, who speaks for the Tom Hopkins? The 
the Southern Town Council, Hopkins to speak for the Town of Hopkins or the District Council President. Certainly an emergency. I think uh, most people would agree that it should be the Council President, but this was an emergency. There was no intending reason for, the, for that letter to go out. It should have been put on a Town Council agenda and discussed and voted upon by the Town Council. Now we are here a year later, and the Town Council uh, adopts a position after the, uh, the state went with that and suggested that we supported that. And there was no vote of the Town Council of Hopkins last year that the Town of Hopkins supported the application for the Tiger Grant. And uh, during this election season, and I am a council candidate, and whether or not I uh, win or not, that's up for the voters to decide on November 8th. I do plan to discuss the, the way this was handled. Thank you. Scott, I just want to comment on you because it seems like your comments are directed to me. Um, you know, the initial support was of the Tiger Grant. And so we had about a day to decide. Bill and I, Bill wrote the letter, signed it, and gave, I, and gave, I gave approval. Um, but, you know, I don't want you to confuse, like anyone else out in the public or that may be listening, the confusion of the initial support of a Tiger Grant with finding out all the facts of a project as they came to fruition with several meetings and finding out its impacts of, of the town, with the town. You can't confuse the two. One was an initial support letter, the other, was a, a resounding no with council approval, and that superseded, I believe, any, any initial support of a Tiger Grant. So uh, if you read my editorial in the paper, I think it speaks for itself. Uh, you know, may, maybe, um, you know, you just, you know, no, I'm not, Scott, I'm not going to let you go off on this, because it's obviously just pointed and you're being a little disrespectful. So if you want to take out your political, you know, go ahead and do it in the papers, you can do it, but we're not doing it in the, in the council meeting. Read the, read the article that explains itself. And, uh, and good luck in the election. So, anyone else? Yes. As you know, my name is Margaret Smith. I own a house at 12 North Drive. And I'm here because on the 5th of July, the town council agreed that on the 6th of September, we were going to act on the soil excavation renewal permit for M&L Holdings Limited Liability Corporation. I understand that you suddenly moved in August, I think the 22nd comes to mind, was the day you decided to just pass it. And this again is something that the council did without adequate input from the community. Those of us who live there are more aware of things in our neighborhood than you are. For instance, my parents bought that house in 1984. In 1988, my father hired a lawyer in a law firm in Providence because the sand pit was being excavated very close to his property and very steeply. And he was concerned, and I absolutely agree with him, that it was so steep that his property could be taken in a major storm such as a hurricane because the sand almost liquefies when you pour enough water on it. The natural angle of repose of dry sand pick it up on the web is 15 degrees. Anything steeper than that brings the land under question. In 1995, after it had been closed as a commercial venture, my mother again went back to the law firm and at work with the town. The first time, the town building inspector worked with the owners and they agreed that no further excavation would be done in the corner between my parents' property, tax map for plat one, route two, 216, and the access road into the area because the sides were too steep. In 1995, they, they under the town's direction, they regraded the side for adjacent to tax map for plat one, currently Lance's property, and all the way from the corner uh, my side of the, of, the lane, of the pit, from the corner all the way down to the other corner. And the map that Mr. Durio created that was given to the town on numerous occasions, you can see that breaking and how orderly it is. They took all the sand they could get and put it back up into that bank. 
when you created the soil estimation permit, nobody put any limits on where they could take that sand. When I got the application that uh, uh, Mr. Solvitsek presented to the town council in August, I realized that where they told you there was sand was right adjacent to their road down into the pit. Now, if they take sand from there, they're going to eat away at their road. They did not do any sand pits down in the depth of the sand pit because there's no sand there. If they go into that corner, which the town has already said they didn't want sand to be excavated from, they will put Route 216 in jeopardy, Lamson's in jeopardy, and, and the houses at least in my corner on the south side. There is no limitation on that soil excavation permit about where they can excavate. And so my property has been put at risk. I could lose my stone wall, I could lose my garage, I could lose my backyard. We have not had such a storm, but we do get them in the Northeast. Um, secondly, and I think there are some things that the town council can do about this. We want to get a new building inspector. And hopefully, he will understand that he's supposed to enforce the zoning laws and not say, oh goody, you can do anything you want to do, which is what has happened for several years. First of all, in 2012, there was a zoning certificate issued by the building inspector. I don't know how the town council tells a new building inspector to revoke that certificate, but it should be revoked because it does not follow the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance says that he has a pre-existing, non-conforming right to mine sand from that property. That sand has never required a screener and has never required a dump truck bring uh, material into the property only to excavate. That zoning certificate implies that he can bring anything into the property that he wants to at any time and he can screen. Last Monday, a week ago today, I could not eat my breakfast in peace. He was out there running the screener from 7 a.m. until at least at 11 o'clock when I left the property. And there were at least five bangs, from, probably from a dump truck. I couldn't <coughs> see it, I can't prove what it was. But something banged to empty. It was loud, it was jarring. If you were eating, you, did, you spit out your tea. So that's not acceptable. Secondly, several zoning ordinances ago that were never repealed, there was a required 200 foot buffer for any new sand that has been created since the zoning ordinance was created. This one precedes, so you can't enforce it on this one. It does not have a 200-foot buffer in any direction. But when you put the soil excavation permit together, you should have limits on the steepness of the slope on all sides. And that steepness should be something less than 15 degrees to give protection from the property owner to the depth of the sand pit. It should be something less than 15 degrees. And no permit should allow any mining that would put that kind of a, a slope in jeopardy. Um, and, when, and your ordinance says that they are supposed to tell you specifically where they plan to mine. And neither the application nor the renewal does MNL Holdings, which is Frank Teresi owns it wholly, and he also runs the Mad River Construction. Nowhere does it say where he intends to actually take sand out in either one. That's a fault that the town council should have asked for. And lastly, when we have worked on this issue, we thought we had protection from the state, the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, and all the environmental protection laws. And what <coughs> we have discovered is that you were protected if it goes into a stream or waterway. But if it goes directly into an aquifer, a prime aquifer, there are no rules. There is no permit required and no rules. And I request that the town council work with your legislatures, the Rhode Island DEM, to rectify the situation so that we do not get dumping into a prime aquifer. Yeah, I'm going to take a second. Mr. President, um, I just see if I may speak. Yeah. Um, this is an open forum. And Mrs. Smith certainly is within her rights to speak, but I, I want to remind the council that it is, it is a, a matter that's been on the agenda many, many times uh, 
applicant was represented by counsel. Uh, and under the Open Meetings Act, the counsel cannot respond to Mrs. Smith's comments tonight because it's not on the agenda. That's not a criticism of Mrs. Smith at all, but uh, if we want to discuss this, we'd have to put it on the uh, agenda for another meeting. But that cannot be uh, responded to by the counsel tonight without violating the Open Meetings Act. Okay. That's fine. I, I understood that. But I, I did want, because it was supposed to be on the agenda tonight, I am here. Well, I, I set the agenda and I wasn't aware of that. I am telling you what you said in the town council meeting on the 5th of July. I am aware that on, I think it was the 22nd of July, you put it on the agenda after 8 a.m. on the 22nd. No, on the agenda, on the agenda for 15th. Oh, the 15th, the I'm sorry, 15th. I got the thing. I wasn't here that day. I'm sorry, the the that. that was the 15th. I'm sorry, I couldn't yeah. find the notes because I wasn't here. Right. I wasn't sure what date it was today. I'm not sure about the posting aspect, but. Oh. But it, it meant that the community had absolutely no input on that agenda item because we didn't know. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay? Okay. I'm done. Thank you. Please, please, we do need to enforce the zoning ordinances. Thank you. Good. Yes, a question to Kevin, actually, um, to the chair. Uh, what was the difference when Frank responded to Scott Bill Hurst and Frank responding to this tech uh, resident? Because the difference is there's a, uh, there's a personal privilege uh, aspect to that where it, the, uh, the topic that was discussed Previously, uh, was in the form of a criticism of the council president. Um, I think there's a limited uh, personal privilege exemption for him to respond without going into detail, which is what, exactly what he did. Okay, all right. I just didn't. I just. I, I was, was looking for clarification. It's, 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 the it's difference between the two. It, there's a there's a point where you kind of have to uh, be practical about it, but in, uh, in, in that type of uh, criticism. This time of year, um, it is a point of personal privilege that, okay. if responded to in a very limited, temperate way, which it was in my opinion, uh, it's all it's consistent. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I just yeah, no, so. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> How are we doing tonight? I'll, I'll be brief. I won't get my blood pressure up. I'm here at 229 Asher Road for Mr. Wilson Mills, and I'm the independent candidate for District C. I've sat, sir, I've sat in a couple of your meetings, and this topic of this sand pit landfill has come up a couple of times. Not a criticism, just a suggestion. Maybe I'll take a look at it again. You know, I realize you're bring on, um, going to bring on a new resident inspector. Resident inspector. Might just be a good thing. Well, you know, just People come here and you know they're concerned, and I understand that too. Clive said, "Thank you." Thanks, Mike. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A